Actually, I moved in with a girl once. Uh, she wasn't my girlfriend, she was just my housemate. Moved in with her, but she was, she was hot. And I wanted to, like, kiss her. But you don't, you can't. You just pay the rent, do the dishes and shut the fuck up. <laughs> One Saturday night, she's picked up some bloke. She walks in the door, she introduces me to him. She says, uh, CJ, this is Gary. Gary, this is CJ. I said, g'day, mate. How are you? Your turn tonight, is it? <laughs> Sit down on the edge of the couch here, take off your T-shirt, I'll grab the video camera and let's get started. <laughs> I'm CJ Fortuna. Stand-up comedian, actor, and star of a new film called The Heckler. During production, I researched my role by talking to other comedians about how they got into comedy and what it's like to be heckled. And the best way to do this was in a bar over a beer. Hello, here we are at the College Lawn Hotel, and my guest today is... Fiona O'Loughlin. Hello, Fiona. Hello, CJ. Did you go to college? No, I did not University? go to college. No? <laughs> no. I nursed briefly. Nursed? Yeah. 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 The lives I've saved, giving up that career, are countless. So that's where it all began. That's where it all began. So, Fiona, welcome to Comedians in Bars Drinking Beer. Um, yeah, thanks for that, CJ. <laughs> no worries. I've got uh, some uh, a few drinks for us. Uh, for the show. You haven't done your research, have you? No, you just wanted two beers for yourself. <laughs> I don't know how I'd I'm going to have a Diet Coke. Hey, you want a Diet Coke? Yeah, thanks. It bloody worse for you. I, I think so. Diet Coke. Well, apparently it gives you dementia, but anyway, <sighs> the rate I was going with drinking, I was going to get dementia <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Okay, so over the years, every time I'd bump into you, and generally it would be a comedy festival too, you do, you, I mean, you hardly knew me, but you were always very generous, very giving. Well, you're one of the first people I actually knew. Like, I didn't know anyone. When I came here in 2001, that was my first year, you've always been in the landscape. Yeah. So when you came over in 2001 to Melbourne, yeah. prior to that, you'd been doing comedy for how long? Well, I'd, I hadn't done it professionally. So I used to do a lot of emceeing in Alice Springs, and we used to put these cabarets on every two weeks at the art centre there. Right. And one night someone said to me, you're doing stand-up. I was so green. But yeah, but I've got the feeling though, because I remember you never being not good. Like, you just oh, were. Oh, well, I, I, I was I, not good well, for a long time. I didn't, I didn't. Uh, but that's before, you know why? Because I was playing the wrong instrument. And then I used to say that. You, you, you had a dream. I, well, I you didn't know what it was, but. I <laughs> walked into the Star and Garter, which you'd remember well. Yes. And Brad Oaks was the first. Brad Oaks and Bob Franklin were them seeing. And Brad Oaks said, Do you want to get up and do 10? And I said, yeah, sure, but I didn't have 10. Like, and I had just set up some gags mm. and st st woeful. Like, I broke my husband's nose in two places, once in the bathroom, once in the kitchen. Right. There must have been something though. You gotta start somewhere. There was something that, yeah, there, there was enough that I was getting back mm. to be bitten. So early days, you, you get hooked You'll do whatever it takes to do it. We're talking about comedy, comedy not, talking about not my cocaine addiction. I'm not sure where you're at, but <laughs> was there a little bit of fear or anxiety when success began to fall on your doorstep? Yeah, um, shitloads of it. Yeah, because and so you coped with that by bloody just getting pissed. Yeah. yeah. I, I still find it very hard to, um, like, like, I pinch myself still. Like, um, just, just that it went so well. Do you know oh, yeah, I mean? right. Like, it was like a I just surprise feel, for I you. I just feel like the luckiest duck on the planet, you know? It was too big to, to juggle a marriage with. Yeah. Like, I actually, stand up has cost me a lot. Like, yeah, it, it, right. it did cost me my marriage, and yeah. it cost me my home. Mm. And, um, but it just had to be that way. It's like, it, it, it's, still frowned upon by members of my family what I do because of the booze like mm. it's like you need to give this up because you know it makes you unwell you don't have to be a stand-up comedian to get on the booze do you well, that's anyone the thing, there's a lot of people out there drinking booze for all sorts of I've reasons I've only just heard the other day one of my brothers said to my sister no she needs to give it up and I think she needs to go and 
live in a little country town in Victoria and work in a bookshop. And I was like, well, does my alcoholism come with me? Oh, of look, course it yeah, comes with me. Yeah, that's right. And it's like, it's the very thing, the comedy is the very thing that you should hold on to, mm. for crying out loud. And not just for your sake. Oh, thank for you, anyone CJ. else that wants to well, watch the, you. But with stand-up, I'm starting to really talk. Yeah. You know, it's like... And not be uh, afraid of doing it. Because I came yeah. very close to being pigeonholed as the mum comic. Mm. And I mm. never forget when I, I was buying the kids' shoes, I was in Adelaide and it was back to school week and my manager rang and he said, you need a title for your show. And I, had, I just came up with this title. Oh my God, I nearly... If I had a gun, I would have shot myself directly. As soon as the words come out what of my mouth. It? Oh, CJ, it's so embarrassing. I'm a mum. Oh, it's worse. Mum world. I actually called a show. <laughs> I actually called a show from here to maternity. Ah! No, that's all right. That's great. No, it's revolting. Yeah, it's a pun. It's, it's where you were. It, you might as well call what? your show. If you're remotely cool, don't come to this show. Yeah. I don't particularly care for fame, but you've got to put I your dial you out there I just think, enough yeah to get people to come to your shows. Mm. But I'm now talking about racism, what I saw in Alice Springs, and... Yeah. Jesus. Oh, God, other people that are different. <laughs> Annoying. Well, racism is really, really funny. No, truly well, it is. good. The only way I've found to talk about it is to laugh at the racists, like, because they're hilarious. I once was in a book club and in Alice Springs, so this is going into my new show. And I wouldn't have done this in a pink fit 10 years ago, this material. But it, I'm like, it's fucking happens. Anyway, so our book that we'd been reading that month was Mandela's biography. And um, a couple of weeks after that book had been our subject, I get a call from a triple certificate nurse, right? So she's not an idiot, yeah, no, but she is. Triple. Yeah, triple educated, educated yeah. nurse. Yeah who'd been in the book club, and she rings me up and she goes, oh, Fiona, Mandela's been released, have you heard? It was the day he was released, right? She rings me up, have you heard? And she said, we've got to have champagne, um, but can we have it at your place? Because there's a heap of abos out the front of mine. Ah! <laughs> Punchline there, and, and she that, wears it. See, you know, I never with um, well, that's racist whole... people, it's like hard to deal with. Well, it's like, because I disagree with them, but yet I don't want to. There, there's a fine line in this show. I do talk. I'd say 10% of the show, 15% is is the revelation of what I saw, and we'll see how it goes. But it's right. landmines. Can't wait. Landmines on the stage whenever you. Uh, I wanted to ask you. So, in your early days of stand-up, did you get heckled a bit, and what was it like? I. I think a comic invites heckling. Like it's it's another instrument. You, it's a, it's an instrument I can't play. Like so, I would never encourage it. So I have to be dying a terrible death to be heckled. Yeah. So you've had some death on the stage. Oh, terrible death. Have you got a? And can I you think share worse one with me? than it. I got the saddest heckle. It was in a theatre in um, Cairns, and it was a corporate, but in a theatre situation. And the CEO's wife of the company that had employed me. She, she came up onto the stage. She took the microphone out of my hand and she said, stop it, love. Go home. That's kind of... Uh, that's not a heckle, that's, that's just rude. That's not a heckle. <laughs> that's, that's a mercy killing. You know, that was just a... Yeah, she came onto the stage. Yeah. Took the microphone out of your hand. Yeah. Stop it, love. Go home. It okay. just makes me think, you must have been shit. <laughs> I was. <laughs> I was so what bad. What are you doing? <laughs> well, that's the thing. This is a... It takes so long to learn this craft, mm. you know? I don't trust anyone who says they've never been heckled, you know? Everybody, I think you need to get heckled. Yeah, you ha and you have to die. And uh, that's that connection, you know, from an open mic all the way to Dom Herrera. Like, we all know, and it's only a stand-up comic who knows how alone they are on that stage. Ha 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 ha!